Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about an extreme pattern as we go from record cold to record heat. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. First of all, let's start off with your where we stand for summer so far. Here is your average means for August. We're a couple of days in, but Man, we've had a truly impressive August cold front uh, back behind it. It left some much cooler conditions for August standards with those five to seven, if not upwards to 10 degrees below average not anomalies uh, for a good chunk of the of the U.S. If we take you back to July. Here's where the average mean stand then. It was pretty, pretty uh, below average for much of the South and Southeast, even portions of the Northeast. Uh, and even portions of the southern regions of uh, Arizona with all that monsoonal rain that they received, they ended up below average. Up up here in uh, the west, in the Pacific Northwest, they were predominantly ab above average between your average highs and your average lows. That's for July. And if we take you back all the way to June, uh, you can definitely see for, again, much of the south and the southeast were basically uh, average to slightly below average. Much of the west, much of the north northwest, and the upper interior regions of the central plains were was above average. So it's been predominantly, uh, you know, average to definitely below average for a good chunk of the south and southeast so far for uh, summer. So where do we stand as far as the the year to date goes? I mean, here is the from basically January first to August third. Yeah, again, you see a theme here? I mean, it's been below average for a good chunk of the central U.S. And much of the southeast is experiencing just about where we where you typically should be at. But man, all your well above average anomalies have been out west and where the ridge has been more or less dominating for much of the year up here into uh, the northwest and the upper interior portions of the U.S. So where do we stand kind of going forward? Here is your record lows. I mean, I showed you that cold front at the beginning. Man, this is now pressing all the way down to the deep south. And these are this morning's lows for August the 5th. And man, these teal colors are just near record lows. But the blues that are showing up in Louisiana and Mississippi and parts of Texas here, all the way down to the coastal communities, that's record daily lows for this time of year. So that is one impressive cold front that made it all the way down into the deep south and cleared the coast uh, of the U.S. And we've got one more day, just one more day of experiencing some of those cooler like conditions before we rapidly uh, flip and we rapidly warm up. But man, much of the Northeast is going to be hard pressed to get out of the 60s today. Yeah, they're going to be under a lot of rain and cloud cover, but normally you're in the uh, you know low 80s this time of year. So you were talking highs of 65, 68 degrees. Man, that's going to be feeling really nice for like a fall-like day uh, up there. And you can definitely see as the as the uh, the ridge is going to be starting to build back in for much of the south and to the central plains here will slowly creep up and then really ramp up as we go into uh, next week. But for today, there's your rain and where, the, where it's going to fall. We, we've been basically tracking this cold front all week. And man, I don't need to tell you where the cold front is. It's out here in the Gulf of Mexico and off here in the southeast coast. That's where all the rain's going to be. Uh, out out here in the coastal communities, and then and then right along the I ninety five corridor, that's why they're going to experience in some of those well below average highs today because they're they've got rain and cloud cover to deal with all day long under that uh, under that cool front that will continue uh, to press south. But this is the last day of it. It's going to start fizzling out in some places, start retreating uh, as a warm front. But we still have what they call that Northwest flow for today. And that'll kick up some scattered, isolated activity in portions of a Kansas and Oklahoma and right along the Red River uh, later on this afternoon into the early evening hours. But we also have some instability up here by Minnesota, as well as getting into portions of uh, Wisconsin and to uh, Iowa with some uh, rain and stronger storms as we go into uh, the late afternoon hours. 
So let's take a look at tomorrow. As we go in tomorrow, here's your cold front. It's going to be retreating back as a warm front. That's depicting on this where it goes to, you know, flips from blue to red here. That's going to bring pulling up the south wind. We got the south wind returning. So of course, when we got a south wind, things are going to be starting to heat up as we do have some finally some much needed rain. You're going to be entering the picture for the Pacific Northwest. So places like Portland, you're going to get in the action with some rain showers uh, on the day on Friday. Seattle, Vancouver, all those places hadn't really seen much of anything for the last month. You're going to be seeing some rain creeping back in the picture as underneath this trough, this little disturbance here, that's going to bring some instability and probably going to bring some uh, some stronger storms as we go into uh, tomorrow time frame. But it'll be it'll get its act together on uh, uh, Friday as well with some isolated to scattered activity. So as we transition to that Saturday time frame, you can definitely see the Storm Prediction Center is already highlighted right along that boundary there of some stronger storms kind of breaking out in the heat of the day in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, into Minneapolis, going into St. Paul, into Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So these areas will be under the gun for those stronger to severe thunderstorms with some hail included, some gusty winds. Uh, then back behind it on the tail of the front, you still could be susceptible to seeing those stronger wind gusts out here in uh, Wichita, Kansas, getting into Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, all the way up here into uh, Cedar Rapids, as this uh, this this uh, boundary will continue to press uh, southeast as we go through uh, the late afternoon hours into the early evening. So as we transition and show you the big picture for that Saturday time frame, there's the severe weather that we talked about right underneath that boundary. There's your cold front, which is not a cold or a cool front any longer. It's going to be retreating as a warm front. And so that's going to, as the winds turn around and as this moves in, it'll actually bring the rain showers back into off and land besides not off the coastal coast regions now, but this will bring all, all your rain showers and instability closer into the Carolinas, getting into portions of uh, Georgia, places like Gibson, Georgia, we'll be seeing some rain showers uh, getting into Virginia. Uh, as that instability up here in the Pacific Northwest uh, kind of takes away and you have slight chance in Portland, but it'll retreat back up here in, into uh, portions of uh, Washington and uh, getting into Seattle and Vancouver. So you got two days of rain. Uh, that's about as good as we can get for right now, but still some welcome rain uh, on the way. But underneath that ridge of high pressure, that's going to uh, creep back in. The, you see the monsoon uh, kind of shuts off the taps. As this, as this flow is still there, it's still there, but the ridge is dominating now, so it kind of hits it like a brick wall and uh, shuts shuts all, all the thunderstorms activity and keeps most of the instability down here into the Baja and uh, not making it towards uh, and getting into the desert, the desert southwest. But as we go into that Sunday time frame, I, I kind of picked out the uh, 500 millibar to kind of give you an over, overall view Here's, here's some of the darker colors in reds. That's indication where the ridge is gonna be coming back into play. Like I mentioned uh, several days ago, as the winds turn around, this will be a step up process as you go through the weekend. And we're talking upper 90s easily for much of the South and, and to uh, uh, getting into a good chunk of the 90s for the Southeast, triple digits uh, uh, for the desert Southwest. Underneath this trough, we do have this trough and what, what, what we have what they call zonal flow. This will be keeping all the jet stream well to the north. And you've got some cooler air back, you know, underneath this closed low out here in the Pacific Northwest. So you're talking highs like in the mid 70s uh, for portions. This is the day on Sunday for portions of much of the of, of the northwest. And that will start creeping further uh, east as we go through uh, time next week. But underneath that, that's where the rain showers are gonna be on that Sunday time frame, right underneath that closed low. We'll have some instability in, in, uh, in the interior portions of uh, Washington and Idaho getting into Montana. This zonal flow will have that instability again, where you saw the severe weather, you're still gonna have some leftover uh, storms even into the day on, on uh, Sunday into Minnesota, into Wisconsin, into Iowa again. And then where where that boundary is, where that zonal flow is, yes, you'll have some instability up here in the, uh, up in the Northeast, as here is more or less sea breeze type action, closer down to the shores, 
closer in the coastal communities get it you know taking advantage of some of that daytime heating and those warmer gulf waters yeah right along the coastal areas especially in the florida you could be seeing your kind of your daily afternoon isolated scattered scattered thunderstorms as we transition into that monday time frame this low will continue to press uh, uh east but also somewhat retreat a little bit further off into the north as the ridge will start building uh underneath and eventually kind of take over as this pushes from west to east all of next week but uh as as the low will continue to traverse across along the eastern uh upper regions you'll still have that instability into wisconsin and to michigan getting into uh, illinois and to indiana that's where the rain showers are going to be on the day on uh, monday but look at the look at the map by by uh tuesday time frame there's that trough it will continue to press uh to the east as you go throughout go throughout the middle of next week you can see the zonal flow it just keeps lifting further and further north as it lifts further and further north this ridge underneath will continue to build and lift further and further north so eventually you got another ridge going to be building out here in the pacific northwest and by the time we get into wednesday I mean, you're talking about a massive flip in temperatures from 75 on uh, Tuesday to like triple digits coming back for the Pacific Northwest with, with this ridge dominating uh, for much of, this, of the Pacific Northwest and, and actually much of the country next week. And as this low will continue to move across, you got that warm, hot air, if not record hot air, following along its path so we've got <laughs> from record cold to record heat going to be flipping around in a big way and if we zoom into some of these temperatures i mean man you you got the the 110 the 116 you know type air back in june and some of that type air triple digit air is actually unfortunately going to be coming back <laughs> For the Pacific Northwest, so places like Portland again, where you just hit 75 on Sunday coming up, you'll be at 106 by the time we go to Wednesday. So this is a massive turnaround as the as you got some of that record cold entering the picture this morning, and then a week later we got record heat. <laughs> so it's August, guys. I mean, things are happening in a big way, and you got to keep track of the weather because it changes. So by the time we get into next week by that 10 to 14th day time frame as the ridge will build underneath as that low pressure will continue to shift from west to east all week long we got the ridge building so we got record heat potentially coming back for the pacific northwest and we also have no more 60s unfortunately for for places in like boston and much of new england that's going to re replace with the 90s if not upper 90s if not some of these areas triple digit heat unfortunately mother nature going to remind us it is august and it's hot and it continue it can be hot and we got a massive flip uh on the way so here's your rain prospects for the next week right now we're dealing with that that uh, that cool front that pressed off the southeast coast that will continue to remain alive a lot of that a lot of the rain showers will be much off the coastal communities where that trough will be for much of the week of that instability that's where some of your higher rain prospects will be into idaho and to portions of uh, montana here and then where you have some of that severe weather that'll have some heavier rains of two to three inches for 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 the week as well and then we also have that trough underneath but you can definitely see pretty much high and dry as the ridge will slowly start to build and really amplify as we go with through uh the end of next week so man i appreciate you guys uh, watching i uh, do like this video and definitely uh, leave your comments below and check out my afternoon update i'll be updating on the tropics as well because that's going to be heating up as well as uh, too so check back this afternoon for that update as well while i continue to pr protect you before and after the storm